If you ever have to spawn and destroy a bunch of objects multiple times like these projectiles, then you'll probably just call spawn actor when you need it and destroy actor when you're done with it. But this can actually lead to performance and memory issues if not done correctly. Because spawning and destroying actors is a relatively expensive CPU operation and constantly allocating and deallocating memory can lead to fragmentation. So what is the correct way? Well, the answer is the object pool design pattern. Welcome back to another part of software design patterns in Unreal Engine. We've previously discussed the observer pattern and the mediator pattern. If you haven't seen them, I'll be linking them somewhere. And in this part, we're going to be discussing the object pool pattern. So what is the object pool pattern and how can you implement it in Unreal Engine? Simply put, the object pool pattern says, instead of spawning an object and allocating a small space in memory for it when needed, and then destroying it and freeing up that space when you're done with it, instead, you should spawn a whole bunch of these objects when the game begins and mark them as not in use. And this is what we call our pool. And then when you need one of these objects, you take it out of the pool, mark it as in use, and when you're done with it, instead of destroying it, you just return it back to the pool. This saves us CPU usage because just marking an object as in use or not in use is a lot less costly than creating it and destroying it. And because we never actually destroy the objects, their place in memory is reserved for them, which means that we no longer run the risk of fragmentation or the performance of having to constantly allocate and deallocate new memory addresses. And if you want to learn more about memory fragmentation and want to read further into the topic, I'll leave some resources in the description for you. So when should you use this pattern and how to actually implement it? Well, the first use case that I mentioned for frequently creating and destroying objects is a great example. Or you can even use it if you want to limit the number of a certain actor in your game. For example, let's say when your player walks, they leave a footprint behind, which is a decal spawned in the world. And then if you use this pattern, you can set the object pool size to something like 100. And this uh, means that you will never have more than 100 footprints uh, at any time in your game. Now let's look at how to implement this in Unreal Engine for the following use case. We have an ability that spawns a large amount of projectiles, each with their own collision particle system and trajectory. And the current implementation is fairly simple. In our player class, when we fire the projectiles, we just do a loop over a certain count of uh, projectiles we want to spawn. Then we calculate their angle and we just do spawn actor from class and we spawn the projectile. This is how you would usually do it. And in the projectile class itself, when we overlap with something, we check if we should collide. And if so, we just spawn an impact effect, play a sound, and then we destroy the actor. And you can even see it here. So if we play in the editor, you can see on the right here that the projectiles are constantly being created and destroyed, created and destroyed. And then once the ability is over, there are no more projectiles uh, in our outliner. Now let's rewrite this using the object pool pattern. For this, we'll only need two things. We're going to need an actor, and this is going to be our pooled actor. And this will be the parent of any actor that we want to pool. And we will need an actor component, which is going to be our object pool. And this will be the component responsible for maintaining the actual pool of actors. Now, let's start with the pooled actor. Now, the pooled actor is fairly simple. It's going to have one variable, which is a Boolean called in use to tell us whether it's being used or not and another float variable called time to live, which will dictate how long should this actor stay alive before being destroyed. And make sure to set the time to live variable as instance editable by clicking on this eye icon or the checkbox here, and also marketing it as expose on spawn so that we can modify this variable when spawning the actor. And lastly, it's going to have a function called set in use which will take as input the value of in use to either activate or deactivate this actor. So first we need to set our in use variable to be equal to whatever this value passed is. And then we enable the collision if it's being used or disable it otherwise. 
And we also hide the actor if it's not being used or show it otherwise. And as an optimization, we also disable the actor tick if we're not using it. Because even if it's hidden, the tick function is still called, so we disable it to get better performance. And lastly, we check if we are setting this actor to be in use. And if so, then we set a timer by event that triggers after the duration defined in the time to live variable. And once triggered, it just returns the actor to the pool by calling set in use with the value false. And it's also important to promote this timer to a variable and clear and invalidate it before we create a new one to make sure that we're overriding any existing timers. And finally, in our begin play, we want to call the set in use function with in use false, making sure that any pooled actor begins uh, by not being in use. And that's it for our pooled actor. Now we need to implement our object pool actor component. Well, the object pool needs to know a couple of things. First, it will have a pooled actor class variable of type pooled actor, and it's going to be a class reference. This will tell us which child of the pooled actor class are we actually spawning. For example, this will be our projectile class because we will make it a child of the pooled actor. And you'll see in just a minute how we do that. But here, make sure to also set it as instance editable so that we can provide this value from our player class. And second thing, we also need to know the pool size, which is going to be an integer. And this tells the object pool how many actors to spawn in the pool when it begins. And the bigger the number, the more memory the pool will use. So be careful when setting it and make sure that it's also instance editable as well. And finally, a variable for the pool itself, which we will call object pool. And this will be of type pooled actor, but it will be an array because the pool is multiple actors and not a single one. Great. Now let's set up our functions and events. So we'll have one event called initialize pool. And this will be responsible for creating our pool of actors when the game starts. So it will just loop over the pool size and spawn an actor of class pooled actor class. And that's the variable that we defined and we'll pass it from the player that's using this pool. Then it will add to the object pool array, this current pooled actor. Then finally, make sure that the pooled actor is not in use by calling set in use with false then we can just call this event on begin play. All right, so now that we have our pool initialized, we need two functions to help us retrieve uh, an actor from the pool. So first we'll create a function called find first available actor. And this function will be responsible for returning an actor from the pool that is not currently used. So it will have a return value of type pooled actor. And we're gonna have another function called spawn from pool and this function will be responsible for setting the actor to be in use and placing it somewhere in the world. So it needs to take as input the spawn transform of type transform, just like you do when you do a regular spawn actor from class. Okay, so let's implement the find first available actor now. It's pretty simple. It just loops over the object pool uh, with a for each loop and checks if the actor is not in use. And if it finds an actor not in use, it returns it. So now let's go to the spawn from pool function. First, we need to call our find first available actor to get an actor that's not in use and check if it is valid. Because if it's not valid, that means that we failed to find an actor not in use, which usually means either your pool is empty or uh, you've used up all of the actors in the pool. So let's just print an error here because this shouldn't happen and we want to be notified if it does. But if it is valid, then we just set the actor transform with the input transform that we pass to this function. And then we set it to in use by calling set in use and passing true. And finally, we return the pooled actor that we found and set in use. Excellent. And now we just created a generic pool for any pooled actor. Now it's time to use it to create our projectiles pool starting with the projectile class. So I have a projectile class here that on begin play just sets the velocity of the projectile movement component. And then on overlap, it checks if it should collide with something and then spawns an impact effect, a sound and destroys the actor. So how do we turn this into a pooled actor? 
Well, first I'll go to the class settings and change the parent from actor to pooled actor. This makes the projectile a child of this class. And that's the same thing as right clicking on the pooled actor and saying create child. Now that the projectile is a child of the pooled actor, we need to change a couple of things. First, instead of destroying the actor on collision, we'll just set it to not in use by calling set in use with the input as false. Second is the velocity. We, we shouldn't apply the velocity on begin play because begin play will be called as soon as the actor is spawned in pool. Instead, we want it to be applied when the actor is being used instead of being spawned. And to do that, we will have to change it to be on set in use instead of on begin play. And that means we have to override the set in use function. And you can do that by going to the functions on the left here. And in the override dropdown, click the function you want to override. But we don't want to override the default behavior of this function. We just want to add to it. So we want it to keep doing what it's doing in its parent class. And that means we need to right click on it and say add call to parent function. This means just keep doing whatever the parent function does. And then we'll do some extra things here. So the extra thing that we will do here is check if it is being used, then here is where we will set our velocity. And if it's not being used, we want the velocity to be zero. Otherwise we have a hidden actor just flying around the map for no reason. And one final very important thing is that this projectile has a particle system. So even though our pooled actor has collision disabled and is hidden and tick is disabled, when it's not being used, the particle system will still be rendered even though it's hidden, and that will significantly impact performance. So we also have to make sure to get our particle system here and deactivate it when it's not being used and activate it when it is being used. And that's it. Now our projectile is a pooled actor. We just don't destroy it, and instead we return it to the pool and we extended the set in use functionality to do some projectile specific things here. And you can do the same thing with any actor of any type. Now, the only thing that's left to do is actually use this object pool in our player. So in my BP player class here, I have an event that fires the projectiles and it just calls the regular spawn actor from class function. And we want to replace that to instead use an actor from our pool. So the first thing we need to do is add the actor component of our object pool. And when you click on it, you can configure the variables that we set as instance editable. So we can set our pooled actor class to be our BP projectile. And this shows up here because the projectile class is a child of the pooled actor class. Then we can set the pool size to something like 100, which means that there will be 100 projectiles ready to be used. And make sure to set a size that makes sense for your game, because the bigger this is, the more memory it will take. And finally, we can just replace the spawn actor from class function with spawn from pool that is available on our object pool actor component. Now for the moment of truth, let's test it all out. So if I go here and I play, you'll see that as soon as the game starts, there are already a hundred projectiles in the world, but they're invisible, so we can't see them. And as soon as I do my ability here, you'll see that the hundred remain a hundred. Nothing changes, nothing gets added, nothing gets removed and the ability just works as expected. But one very important thing that we haven't done, you'll see if I play from here so that the projectiles don't collide with anything, they never actually get destroyed after a certain amount of time, they just keep going forever. And the reason is because we didn't set a time for our pooled actor. So this time to live by default is zero. So that means it will live forever. So if we set it something like five, or let me make it even less so that we can see like three, now, if I play from here, now after three seconds, these should get destroyed and perfect. They get destroyed and return to the pool. So they're not really being destroyed because they're still here. And if you want, you can also make this a uh, variable. So here in our uh, pool, when we first spawn it, this time to live, we can just promote to a variable, uh, make it instance editable as well. And then in our player, we'll be able to click on our AC uh, object pool and then provide a custom time for each use of this uh, component. Now, let me actually show you what this object pool looks like if things were not hidden. 
So if I go to my pool actor and I just make sure that it's always uh, visible and I also go to my projectile and I not deactivate it. So if I play, let me detach and you'll see that we have the pool of a projectile spawned here. And now if I do the ability and I'll do it in slow motion, you'll see that when they collide, they stay in their place and nothing gets destroyed. And on the second call, look what's gonna happen. You see all of the projectiles are being pulled from the pool back to the player. So you can even see it with the uh, visual effects here. And when they hit, this is technically them just remaining in their place in the pool, but because we are not hiding them, we, you can see them now. Pretty cool, right? Great. As you can see, this pattern is uh, very beneficial for cases where you want to optimize memory usage or you want to limit the number of actors in your game. And it's also good to know that Unreal Engine uses object pooling under the hood for some of its systems. For example, the particle system and the Niagara system use this pattern and even give you the option to change the pooling method when spawning them. That said, it's also good to be aware of some of the downsides of this pattern. For example, if you only need this pool for a while or for some part of your game and you don't need it again without deleting it, then you'll be using up a lot of memory for no reason. So always make sure to either delete the actors of the pool uh, when you don't need them anymore or just don't use this method if you're gonna use it just for a specific instance. And also, since we spawn a static number of actors in the pool, uh, then we are most likely using more memory than we need. Uh, and sometimes to overcome this method, uh, people would use a dynamic pool size. And that means the pool starts out empty and it, you keep adding actors in the pool as you need them. Uh, but then this also comes with the downside of added complexity and maybe the pool size will even grow further beyond what is needed if you spawn a lot of actors in one time. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and a huge thanks to all my patrons who make all of these videos possible. I recently added a new benefit on my Patreon, uh, which gives you access to a customized chatbot that I built uh, that can help you learning Unreal Engine by following my tutorials. And if you get stuck with anything, if you have a bug or you want to ask a question, chances are the chatbot knows the answer because it's trained on all of my video transcripts, descriptions, and even the comments, and it keeps getting smarter over time. So if you're interested in that and many, many more benefits, check out my Patreon page and uh, see for yourself if it's worth it. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.